More than half a billion chickens are grown by the Delmarva poultry industry every year. It is an industry that has a huge economic impact on the peninsula. The biggest company around here is Purdue Farms, which has prided itself on being a leader in innovation. Well, I sat down this week with company chairman Jim Purdue to talk about new things his company is doing to keep getting bigger and better. This Purdue Farms chicken house is not your traditional chicken house. As you can see in this corporate video from the company, it has windows to let in natural sunlight, but it also has things to keep the birds moving, sort of like fitness equipment for chickens. We call them enrichments or things to play with, you know, bales of hay and uh, perches, hide boxes. Why does Purdue think chickens need to be more active? Well, it all started when they bought a company called Coleman Natural Foods back in 2010, where the chickens were free range and very active. And really the, the impetus for it was organic chickens. We bought Coleman Organic, and we're now the largest organic chicken producer. We found that the meat seems to be uh, superior and uh, premium meat, it's tender. Um, has a lot of positive qualities. So Purdue is looking to see if those positive qualities are the same for all Purdue chickens, not just organic. Basically, we measure the activity of our chickens. The chickens, as Bruce Stewart Brown, our veterinarian, will tell you they do four things. They eat, drink, sleep, and mess around. And so we want to increase the mess around part of it uh, by two. We've committed to converting 200 chicken houses, and we're just about complete. I think we're within 10 houses of completing that um, and then measuring, you know, the performance of the chickens in the window versus solid sidewall houses. At the same time, Purdue was experimenting with different types of chickens. But looking at, at heritage breeds, so like a brown feathered bird, which are much more active. In fact, they're into the ceiling. I mean, they're, we've had a couple of trials and they're very, very active, but we have to find out how efficient uh, or how much do you lose efficiency with these birds because they do grow slower you know the feed conversion may not be as good and so just what is the cost implications of that this research can take years last summer purdue introduced its no antibiotic ever program to consumers but their team of experts started working on it 15 years ago in-house they called it the wheaties program and basically we called it wheaties because consumers in my mind, will let us do to our chickens what they do to their kids. Um, and an example here is if they get an ear infection, they get amoxicillin for three days prescribed by a doctor, uh, but they don't put it in their cereal every morning. Thus, Wheaties. Uh, whereas what the traditional, what we were doing, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and what the industry still does is it puts antibiotics in the feed every day. Not anymore at Purdue. Now antibiotics are replaced by natural antioxidants, including herbs like thyme and oregano. For example, there's a, uh, there's a parasite in chickens called coccidi coccidiosis, and it turns out that uh, these, these herbs have a uh, beneficial effect uh, as antioxidants. Purdue is trying to build a better tasting chicken for the right price, but a lot of it hinges on what the consumer wants. The next big thing will be what the consumer tells us uh, is important. Purdue says they're hearing a lot about non-genetically modified products, gluten-free, environmentally friendly, and farm sustainability, but also more simple things like convenience. Certainly anytime you can be more convenient for the consumer, like shortcuts or perfect portions, which solves a problem for them, they will, they will jump on, on a product that, that saves them time and solves the biggest problem of the day, which is what are we gonna have for dinner? And Purdue says they have a lot of interaction with consumers, whether it's through their hotline for comments or complaints, and of course, social media as well. And Jim Purdue says that millennials are driving much of that interaction. We'll be right back.